Valencia Studios. I want to thank Helios Creed for coming down. Helios Creed of Chrome, of course, coming down here from Santa Cruz expressly to do this interview. This is Dr. Sleepless of the Interstellar Nihilism Program. Delighted to have a man I've been listening to for over 30 years, actually. The work of Chrome is legendary in art circles, rock circles, psychedelic circles. Are you aware of this, sir? Um, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it's good to be both aware and unaware at the same time. And uh, I am happily aware that there is a brand new Chrome album in the works. Yeah, we are making another one. <laughs> so. Is there a title? Nope, not yet. But there is a title for the single we're about to hear. Yeah, yeah. And, and we were calling it Prophecy as a working title, but it just sort of stuck, so we'll probably keep to that. And but why we Prophecy? Don't have, it was just what we were doing at the time. You were prophesizing? No. <laughs> mm-hmm. No, it was the song's about prophecy, though. Yeah. Not that... It, it was prophecy. It was about prophecy. That's, I imagine, because there's a lot of prophesizing going on yeah, right now. Yeah. Maybe that's it. Fair enough. Well, shall we hear it then? Okay. This is prophecy. And by the way, you can... This is not going to be on the podcast, so if you've got tape decks, you better turn them on now, um, because we're not going to air this in the podcast. This you can att- acquire by going to uh, to see. Um, this is Monet. <laughs> hey everyone, you want to go to pledgemusic.com dot pledge com slash. Chrome, that's pledgemusic.com slash chrome, where we have a project up uh, to have people who love the music of Chrome and Helios Creed participate in helping um, the band release unreleased Chrome material from 79 and 80. And part of the updates and things that you get for pledging will be a first listen to this song as many times as you want. Uh, prophecy from the new album and a lot of other stuff we'll talk about later so stay tuned the new single from Helios Creed and Chrome Prophecy coming up here on Radio Valencia Interstellar, brother. <laughs> I gotta say that reeks of classic chrome sound. Yeah, somebody thought it was uh, from the uh, 80s. <laughs> from the 80s? Yeah, somebody, right? Yeah, a couple comments yeah. on Pledge Music. Uh, that's, pr- that's pretty good. You know, from the 80, 81 era. Yeah, I know that era. When, when we weren't trying to do that. <laughs> That's because it's a good thing. This 
but let's hope so. You can hear yourself as you talk. You know when you're on my well. Yes, so uh, we are really <laughs> celebrating here because this is the first Chrome album in how long? Ten years. And what was the name of the last one? Angel of the Clouds. And speaking of which, Angel of the Clouds is also one of the new releases available on, through Pledge Music? Yeah, it's not through Pledge Music. Pledge Music is a site to assist artists to connect directly with their fans and people who love their music to um, raise money to release albums. So um, Chrome's using it right now to release the Lost Chrome tracks, which are from 79 and 80, um, material that Damon Edge and Helios left behind in a studio um, and uh, are raising money to purchase back so that he can finish them and release them as Half Machine from the Sun. But one of the pledge items is Angel of the Clouds and that was a release that was done in 2002 and released only in Germany and it's very hard to find anywhere so it's really exciting for us to um, be reissuing it at this time when Chrome's putting out a new album and looking back at the old materials is kind of in the middle. And, a lot uh, going on. Yeah. About what uh, time period was Angel of the Clouds recorded? Can you recall? It's late 90s that Damon recorded it and then it, H finished the tracks in 2002. Ah, so it's an interesting type of collaboration. It's sort of a posthumous collaboration. Yeah, he died and didn't finish a lot of the stuff. And he had asked H to collaborate with him before he passed away, and then he passed away before they could realize that, so Angel of the Clouds is that realization of that. Well, Manfred asked me to finish it, you know, a year or so later. Thank you, Manfred, and um, thank you for doing so. Well, another uh, project, you I just... I think that was his last release before you, you know... Yeah. Do you want Before, to talk about hey. the story that you had me transcribe for you that we're putting in the liner notes about Damon's presence with you when you were working on it? Oh, my goodness. Please do. <laughs> uh, Can you go that deep for us, brother? Let me think. Um, <laughs> well, it, it, it seemed to me as I was writing the songs, you know, I could sort of... You know, as I was dealing with his tracks that uh, we were you know working together in the room <laughs> hey watch it <laughs> thanks a lot Gilligan <laughs> yeah so uh, I don't know can I eat and uh, talk at the same time uh, only anybody ever done that no, I'm, I'm, I'm just kidding <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, so what? So you have basically felt his presence as you were working on them? Is it it seemed like it, you know. I mean, I can't prove anything. You can't prove anything with that sort of thing. But, you know, it, it you could really, you know, really seemed like you could feel his, uh, his uh, presence. I would have to venture that you're not alone in that feeling. Um, about 11 years ago, well, actually, shortly after I got to this city, which wasn't long after he passed, wandering around the Warren Headlands listening to Damon's music, I certainly felt his presence many, many times. Hmm. He's a ghost, you know, and, and the most powerful ghosts are the ones that haunt you the most. <laughs> Go away! <laughs> oh, <no>. oh. <laughs> you can stick with me as far as I'm concerned, yeah. <laughs> but you know, some old ghosts are harder for some than others. Now, um, you've also completed in the past year or so a fantastic solo album called Galactic Octopi, which yeah, we're about yeah. to hear a track from. Yeah, actually we did. And uh, <clears throat> tell me something about how that came about in that process and what it was like for you. Well, um, I just... I went to Kansas to, you know, say goodbye to my parents. They were, you know, passing on, as it were. And I came back here and did um, Galactic Octopi, you know, at Lux's house. He had a little four-track that we were using. You did it on a four-track? Actually, 
It was an A track. Oh, excuse me. Well, still A yeah. track. Yeah. yeah. Still A yeah. track is no modern no, it wasn't, convenience. No. It's totally different than what we're doing now, you know, with the chrome stuff. It was my solo stuff. But I, I like the record, you know. Oh, it's a damn fine record, and we're about to hear just how damn fine it is. It's been called one of his best albums in the Italian magazine, in Rockerilla. It's kind of interesting after all these years. They just they really, really like revered this one album. It must stand apart somehow. Let's see why. This is Star Streaker from Galactic Octopi. God willing. <laughs>
today's solution. Fuck Lycra. Fuck Radio Valencia. Providing the music you can get well fucked. Interstellar nihilism. No such program. Chromatic aberrations. Greek mind. And many other bizarre, insane programming choices. You can't go wrong. Late nights, especially in the air, on Radio Valencia for the fucked up shit. Radio Valencia, fuck with us. Yes, we are indeed here smoking weed with Helios Creed. All right. All right. <laughs> that was honky. And you know a man's made it when they're writing songs about him smoking dope. I think. I think. <laughs> <laughs> Not necessarily, but a little bit. Well, and what what a fine band that is, I suppose. I mean, it's not chrome, but it's still fun. You know, uh, so let, let's talk a little bit about how you got chromed. Chromed. <laughs> <laughs> I, I first would like to know, um, well, well, I spent a lot of time trying to make a band, you know, it just never worked out. <laughs> and you started playing guitar when? When I was 12. And Why? Different reasons. <laughs> you told me a real interesting one earlier. Yeah, yeah. You care to share that one? Yeah. Well, like my friend had a band and he had lots of girlfriends, so that was a good reason right there. Yeah. Huh. I'll, I'll never forget when I saw on American Idol uh, this guy auditioning and saying, I'm doing this because I want all the women to know how talented I am so I can get a girlfriend. Yeah, I wasn't very popular, so that was a good, you know, drive to get me started, you know, the fuse. Amazing. Music is the path to love. Uh, What a concept. (laughs) So. I transcended that. You you did transcend that. You started making music for the sake of music. Yeah, yeah. 
thank God for that, and it t- it showed. And uh, so you were in how many bands? How many projects? How how many years? One were you? band. <laughs> One band. What was that? Well, band? two a solo band in Chrome. Okay, uh, and the solo band was your solo project, or was it? Yeah, 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 pretty much. Cool. Actually, I I played with Nick Turner's Hawk when you, you know, did on the road. Wow! Before Chrome. No, no, no. Oh, after Chrome. After Chrome. Yeah, I thought, I, I remember that. Those were yeah. stellar shows. Yeah. Those are definitely stellar shows. So With you Tommy, wa- Grenis, Dill, Dentmar, and... I don't think her mic's on. Yeah, <laughs> it's real soft. you got to speak directly into it. you got a soft voice, darling. Uh, wait, are you on? I don't think you, she's on. I don't hear her. I don't even... Yeah. Ah, uh, try this, try this, try that. Okay. Hello, hello. There, there you, you go. Are. I had the wrong See? fader up. Dr. Sleepless asleep at the wheel again. <laughs> Crash. <laughs> so we're listening to Pygmies in the Park in the background from the very one. first album. Yeah. Alien soundtracks. Mm-hmm. And so you met Damon how and when, if I may. Well, I I had a violin player. I was playing acoustic guitar in clubs and uh, acoustic guitar. Helios, Helios, <laughs> Creed, acoustic, yeah. open mic. Actually, that was it. And I, I I got to know this violin player, Gary Spain, wow. who was you know Chrome's bass player, and he kept telling me they made a record. And I go, wow, I want to make a record. I was really excited uh, about. Yeah, it. I bet. Wanted, you know, I didn't know anybody making records. You know, back in. 75, you know. Not many people were. 74, you know. But uh, so I was all into that. And and the the record was a flop. It was the visitation. I mean, it wouldn't, nobody liked it at, when it first came out. Yeah. Yeah. They like it now, but they didn't like it then. Well, you know? I think that's because they've got the chrome history to refer to, and they want yeah, to know where it, it originated. Some people really like it now. I mean, it's like, I'm not on it, of course, but it's really, uh, anyway, uh, and I think and it shows, but after, <laughs> no, after the, the flop of the record, the band got discouraged and everybody quit, but Damon didn't want to quit and Gary didn't, you know, good. That's good. To hear. Good. I'm thank God they didn't. But, uh, you know, it just, you know, John couldn't make it, you know, he was too, he had too many issues and Gary went with John. So it wound up just me and Damon. You know, and, and we just started making, you know, recording right away. Just, wow. And it clicked right away. Yeah, as we clicked. Damon yeah. described it in yeah. an interview. And all. Yeah, we clicked really good. That, Can I pipe in something that you told me? Pipe it in, darling. Pipe. <laughs> <laughs> Pass the pipe. Uh, oh. Again, for the story that I put together for Angel of the Clouds, um, the release, um, H told me that, that he heard the visitation and he thought it was stony and that it oh, was I loved it. different than anything that was going on in the Bay Area at That's the time. That's for sure. Because they were all these hippie blues bands that were just depressing <laughs> and bummed blues him out, everywhere. right? <laughs> and he knew, he knew intuitively my thing. <laughs> that they needed him. It was yeah. a gut. It was just like, boom, this is the yeah, guy absolutely. and the band. He loved the production. And he said, I've got to meet Damon Edge. This is the band. Wow. And he knew that they, yeah, I knew they needed they, him. Yeah, I did and have, when they yeah. met, he asked I knew exactly Gary, what to do with that, you know. Yeah. I felt that To make so it often. better, you know. Yeah. And, and so what surprised met, me, for once in my life, my feelings were correct. <laughs> uh, the truth you is know? in here in the end. So the story goes, when Gary arranged yeah. the meeting, he said directly to, to the meeting with Damon, he said... You guys need me. <laughs> that was like the opener, right? And they yeah, did. And that the was my opening statement. What did they think of that was, statement, though, I wonder? Well, they auditioned him, and then they realized they yeah. needed him. <laughs> they needed somebody, <laughs> so you know. Actually, it was just me and Damon. They just yeah. needed him. He, he did just, drums and keys. I did bass and guitar and vocals. And it was only and later that other people doing came started vocals in. eventually, too, you know. Oh, so you did most of the vocals initially? Yeah, at first. I did all the vocals at wow. first, pretty much. It's except for just like one or two songs. You see, they're so processed. You can't really tell who's singing sometimes. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> but that's a good thing. We developed, there's a, there's we developed a, our own style. 
There's a that's really wonderful sure. that's why you're interview now. that um, Brent Marley, who who does the Helios Chrome fan page, he tracks down these gems, and he found an interview from '81 of Damon in, on on the radio in Australia. So we're going to post that on the PledgeMusic.com site, um, and he talks about when. Helio stepped in and, and how in sync they were, how they, they felt the same about everything, on the you know, the rhythms and the, it's really, it's it's really cool, it's wonderful to hear his voice too you know, to hear what Damon sounds like. Yeah, and, you do have oh, and I don't know if my mic was too. on before but I just want to say uh, it's on pledgemusic.com slash chrome, forward slash chrome and we have a project up on there to release unreleased material from 79 and 80 that Damon and H did so we we'll, we pledge these updates for pledgers only and that's one of them that we're going to put up is this this um, interview with Damon it's a really good scenario with a lot of perks available like the album Angel of the Clouds and other fantastic Galactic chrome perks Octopi that you just heard you can get signed copies CD or vinyl and and every pledge you do, you, you buy something, but you get the digital download of, of um, Half Machine from the Sun. Yeah, it's is, the gift that just keeps giving. And then you get all the updates <laughs> of Christmas. videos and photographs that I've been <coughs> shooting of the process of working on the 2012 Chrome release. And just a lot of good vibes happening over there. Well, we're taking a little more time than we had planned, but because we're just now getting to the first chrome album we're going to hear chromosome damage we're going to hear just how well these guys clicked in the beginning and this is helios on vocals correct yeah indeed here on interstellar nihilism Oh, I'm not I want to go down. 
This is Dr. Sleepless here in the studio with Helios Creed. And I gotta say, one thing that made early Chrome stand out. Oh, I gotta call it. Radio Legend. Oh, certainly. Yeah, uh, let, let me get you on mic here. Uh, if I can. We've got a caller asking, ready to ask a question. What's your name? All right, what's your question for Helios? Well, I was just wondering if you're familiar with streamers and if you ever played any shows with streamers back then. Yeah, I remember the band, uh, the Screamers, but I don't, I don't know if I did or not because I did so many, you know, uh, shows. Oh yeah, my mic wasn't on. I'm sorry. Yeah, it, yeah, I remember the band, um, but I can't say for sure whether uh, I did or not, you know. But yeah, I do remember the Screamers. Were you in the band? Oh. I might have, yeah. I probably did. <laughs> might have hung out with I used a little to, bit. I, in the early days, I used to, you know, make a point to hang out with everybody, huh? whether they liked it or not. <laughs> oh, that's the way of it all. Let's see if we have you any You might other. remember me. <laughs> okay, well, we sure appreciate your call. All right, have a good night. Anyone else who has a question for Helios can call us at uh, 962-7979, area code 415. And I'm here for your question answering... Edification. Yeah. <laughs> what he said. <laughs> All right, that's ferrochromium in the background. And actually, your mic was on. I just had the cue buttons on, so I we know. couldn't hear us on the headphones, thank God. So, you know... I thought I was going deaf. Yeah, I, I heard you somewhere in the background. I knew yeah. something was happening, thank God. But you got to have the right buttons not pressed. Uh -huh. That could apply to many things. Anyhow, um, you said that... I was about to say how uh, all the backwards guitar, all the uh, mayhem cut-ups, snippets from soap operas, you said soap in that last operas, tri yeah. track... Oh, come on. Oh, come that, on. I say that. I guess wife was bitching at him. You know those 70s soap operas. Oh, come on. Come on. <laughs> and uh, so what made you come on to San Francisco instead of L.A.? LA? Oh, yeah, yeah. And when was this? When was this decision? Uh, when made? I was, uh, I had decided I, I was living in Hawaii, and I, there's no culture, no music there. I what age? I had to, 18, 19. So this was your escape from home. Yeah, sort of. yeah, I'm going to escape, you know. And, and I go, I'm going to go make music. They either go, where are you going to go? I go to San Francisco. I go, no, go to L.A. That's where all the music is at, you know. Uh -huh. But see... I always felt like San Francisco was the seat of psychedelia, you know, and it was in history. So that's yeah. where I wanted to go. In that's the only history. reason I wanted to go here. Uh, yeah. so you know, I, I never told you that San Francisco. <laughs> and you know, no one ever told me about San Francisco. It's a wonder I wound up here. It's changed uh, my life. I know it changed yours, didn't it? Ah, uh, uh, yeah, yeah. It's a strange city. <laughs> strange people strange yeah. city <laughs> all right well we are uh, moving forward here uh we are actually going to go back here a little bit because i want to hear the residents uh it very well could be the residents you know anytime you listen to early chrome material you could easily confuse it with the residents it's that bloody warped i'm happy to say <laughs> um but we're going to go back to what I just learned today for the first time was the very first Chrome track that Helios recorded with Chrome. But oddly enough, it appeared as the first track 
on the second album, the title track, Half Machine Lip Moves, here on Interstellar Nihilism with Helios Creed in the studio. And the aliens guided him like crazy. Yeah. <laughs> 
And, you know, curiously enough, that's two songs that we've heard just now that I remember specifically Damon Edge reprising on his first solo album, Alliance. He did that last one as Coming at La Mer. And another one, the song, uh, Will You Bring Me Tea? Uh, mm-hmm. He also redid that one on Alliance. Did oh, you? really? Yeah. Re- yeah. Remastered it or no? No, it? he recomposed. Uh, no, really? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Using those same lyrics. How did it turn out? Beautifully. Really? Yeah. Uh, yeah I highly recommend it. Um, hmm. <laughs> uh, that that first Damon Edge album and the second one are pinnacles in his solo work. Oh, which uh, one was that? Alliance and uh, the Wind Is Talking. Yeah, I, I heard that. The Wind Is Talking. No, I haven't heard it. Oh, yeah. I've heard it. Oh, man. Uh, but you I know, refused to listen to those records. I was kind of mad at them at the time. <laughs> I, fi- I, I figured, you know, and that's sort of why I wanted to bring it up, because, you know, you're highly beloved, Helios, but also the memory of Damon is highly beloved, as it is for you as well, I'm sure. And, uh, you know, what what happened to Damon was tragic. And uh, we we mourn his loss. We mourn the loss of all our fallen soldiers. Um, but uh, I just wanted to mention that you know that he he redid those songs. I think because he had a great love for those particular two pieces, especially. Mm. You have but, a copy of them? Uh, I can hook you up in a heartbeat, brother. Really? Right here? Uh, I don't know about right here, but okay. it's very soon. Yeah, it'd be great to listen with, to you, with them, listen to them with you together. I, I'm actually speechless at the thought. All right, a future date, my friend. Now uh, we're gonna hear. Um, we're gonna move on just a little bit because we've got a lot of ground to cover, and we're going on to Red Exposure, which, as I understand, is the first album title that. Oh yeah. That I thought of. <laughs> what made you think of that title? He didn't have any ideas. <laughs> <laughs> That's what made you think of it. <laughs> no, I don't know. I don't what, what's Red Exposure? What is Red Exposure to you? It's just a random assortment of words? Exactly. Yeah, I, I like it. It works. It works really well. Like this light right here. Yeah, we are currently experiencing red exposure. Yeah, see? In the studio. How simple it can be. You would think it was just the red light district. Here on Radio Valencia with Helios Creed. We are about to hear... My goodness, what are we about to hear? Let's just see. Oh, no, we're not about to hear that. (laughs) Because that was a talk over track, kids. All right, we are about to hear Anti-Fade. That's just my favorite line. (laughs) It's Eyes on Mars, kids.
because my system is based on this. for him. Something I didn't know is Helio sang a lot of the early core material and then Daniel showed something later. But then I didn't know Helios played both guitar and bass on Red Exposure. And it's something new every day. Now we are moving on to Read Only Memory. One of the truly most fuckedest, uppedest chrome albums ever. In the Jawland. He does perform this on 11 11 11 and it's 12 12 12. He performed it at I Am in Dust, my little soiree of a experimental music festival, which may be happening again very soon. Stay tuned for that. And now, more chrome. Oh. 
is utter mayhem Haas what, what what were you guys thinking I mean what, was this your shot at commercialism yes we, <laughs> we were trying to exploit um, um, uh, Muzak and and soap operas <laughs> the insidious plans both <laughs> Exploiting music and soap operas. That seems to be a, yeah. a starting point. We got point. sick of blues guitar players who wanted to hear music and soap operas. <laughs> well, you know, it's just, uh, you are what you eat. Yeah. So, I mean, really? I mean, what is this like? Well, two, when we two were. Min- two minutes of backwards drum beats. <laughs> <laughs> People are really going to like this. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Only the ones that did five hits of acid, you know. I know. <laughs> now, that brings up another good question, which you may deign to answer or may deign to remain silent. What's that? How much acid were you doing back then? Hardly any, really. I just remembered what sounds good on acid. Ah, uh, so you... <laughs> About once a year. Once a year. I Fair would, enough. I would... Uh, that's not bad. That's, that's do You know... And uh, it's harder to find now, so... Yeah. Tell me about Can't go it. to your next-door neighbor. Hey, why don't you... Uh, used to be able to. Yeah. <laughs> now it's all, like, about the, the drugs that close your pineal gland instead of the drugs that keep them open. What's up with that? The pharmaceuticals? Yeah. Yeah. Pharma... Pharmaceuticals. Yeah. <laughs> but anyhow, we're out of that range. So we're listening to... I am the jaw. Tell me about your performance of this at I am in death last year a little bit, if you can. Tell tell me uh, what that was like for you. That Make, was fun. That was fun. Did that sound good? It sounded really good. I mean, there's yeah. uh, I've got a video of it up on my uh, YouTube page, the yeah, Yuri yeah. Thrall YouTube page. That's U R E. A lot of people liked it. Everyone liked it. We had that was our biggest crowd ever for my festival. Oh yeah. It's all your fault. Thank you. So, um, Monet was there. Yeah. Uh, Her mic isn't on. Now it is. Monet was there. Were you there? I was there. And I want to say that it was 11, 11, 11. And what's today? And today is 12, 12, 12. 
And we started and, at 12. And that was so something little, I did with Yuri? Yeah, it's a little strange that every time you two get together, there's these big portal opening Well, I can guarantee you one days. thing. We're not going to do anything on 13, 13, 13. That's, that's problematic. <laughs> I was just pointing out that the uh, numerological synchronicities... Oh, we're going to have to start over. As guideposts, they're gone now after today. After the 21st, we'll have to start over for 1, 1, 1. Well, I hear uh, there's a rumor going around we're going to be doing that anyway. <laughs> <laughs> but this is supposed to be a very auspicious and powerful day towards the end of this auspicious and powerful year. So I feel the energy buzzing personally a little bit. I'm going to be buzzing personally a little bit very shortly. <laughs> <laughs> and if this thank God for that, <laughs> thank God because really we have a lot to be thankful for. And I'm very thankful right now for the music of I Am The Jaw.
Okay. I have got to know the origin of that song. You not only uh, wrote an amazing song there, you saw an amazing video to it, which I've loved to this very day. Mm-hmm. In, in Bart. Yeah, Bart. We uh, used Bart. You used Bart. <laughs> You took Bart to make the video, and, and dude, like the the shot was that Damon or you, was that? No, it was you? me and Damon. Yeah, and, and were you? Was that you or Damon on the fucking uh, Bart train with the electric guitar and and the like oscillator uh, layered on top of you? And you're like jamming on the fucking guitar as the Bart train's rolling. That was me. I uh, thought I the figured. oscillator. Yeah, there there there's like a a little uh, image of a. A wave on an oscillator is faded over on layered on top of you as you're playing. Hmm. It's very subtly done. It's so nicely done. I mean, who was the bloke that did those videos? Oh, God. Dan yeah. Wagner. Dan Wagner. He d- he did a video for that. He did a video for Danger Zone, and he did a video uh. because I bought the Chrome video released on target video mm-hmm. back in 1980 what you know and i was thrilling to that shit wow. right and so i i was just like oh and oh and you shot a video in a church in north beach right new age new age that was the other video he did and, and tell me about i had to get permission from the monsignor and he was cool with a band yeah, like Chrome. He was Chrome. really excited about it. He's like, ah, people are going to come see how cool my church is in this yeah. rock video. They're going to come and tie Probably it. the best day he had all year. You know? <laughs> yeah. I may, yeah. I, I may follow suit if he's that friendly, if he's still alive. But I don't think so. Um, he was pretty old then, and that was... Well, I'll just go to them. I'll say, well, Monsignor, uh, maybe the ghost still, of Monsignor. Yeah. Anyhow, yeah. <laughs> that That's cool. I love that, that you guys just... Let's do it at church. That was the idea. I mean, you mm-hmm. like, you yeah, needed yeah. a church for New yeah. Age. Yeah. Because the altar, he let us, you know, fornicate on the altar and everything, you know. Were those no, p- just monks' <laughs> robes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought they would get uptight about that, but, you know. You, you weren't just monkeying around? <laughs> Anyhow, I'm sorry. This I just really had to know about that song. No, we were just, you know, and I never monks. I never did get an answer to the question about uh, what is meet you in the subway about. Is it about meeting your girl in the subway? What's that? Is it about meeting your girl in the subway? Meet you in the subway? It all depends on what you're meeting, you know. Well, there was like to leave that open. And maybe you're meeting your elephant or something, you know. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I mean that that's probably what most people think, but especially you know. since there was a hot who was that hot girl in Mexico? <laughs> uh, <laughs> Nancy. Nancy. Yeah. Mm. You really think she's hot? Well that that plaid miniskirt. Yeah. If wasn't it plaid? I don't know. Yeah, it was yeah. Actually that was a girl that we just met in the really? No, I'm just kidding. That was uh, that was a girlfriend. Well, I mean people. Her name do was like, Nancy. It was your girlfriend. Yeah. For about a, a week. Long, Long enough, enough to make to a make good video. video. <laughs> <laughs> Jinx. <laughs> All right. Well, now we're going to move on to another. I could say stuff bad about her because she's probably not alive anymore. No, I'm no, That's she, actually why I'm you can't joking. say anything about her. She could take a joke. Or, you know, she's a good friend. Excellent. Yeah. I can't imagine anyone not being good friends with you, my brother. And yeah. uh, this is Helios Creed of Chrome. And we are in the midst. We are about... Oh, my goodness. It's so late, but we're doing the really? best we can. It's only one twenty-five, really, but late by some people's standards. But we're continuing on now with a huge jump up in production values for Chrome with the album Third from the Sun. And uh, you want to do a little introduction for this? Uh, I'm going to play, start a little bit of off the line, the intro, and then by the time we get to the chorus, we'll have you down. But uh, you're, just, you're doing off the line yeah. first? Oh, yeah, baby. Is that what you want? Are you sure? <laughs> well, right. I, I was going to... Uh, that, that's a good question. Is that what you want? What would you no, like No, no, play whatever. Hey, I think it's a good intro while we talk about how you did this. 
how we did it. Yeah, what 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 studio were you? Did you go into have this? I mean, you, it's definitely a much crisper, more High punchier. Street. Hyde Street. This is where you yeah. recorded. Yeah, Hyde and did you record uh, Blood on the Moon there too? Let me think. I think we used a. You know, I don't remember where we recorded that one. Well, I can probably look that up. Yeah, you can look it up. So what this do I is, look like a walking computer? No. <laughs> we've got Fabian no, Shine singing on this track right now in the background. What's that? Fabian Shine. Oh yeah. Fabian. Fabian. Like fabulous.
And we're live here in the studio with Helios Creed and his compatriot Monet. And we're here with a caller who has a question. Thank you, Monet. Caller, state your name, please. Yo, yo. How are you doing tonight? Doing good. Good show. Thank you. So, uh, what's your question for Helios? All right. Um, is it true that you like model trains? Yes, yeah, I do. You ever thought of incorporating them in a show with you? Uh, actually, uh, I have them in a video. Um, but, uh, yeah, I thought about that. <laughs> I thought about having them in my recording studio, you know, uh, kind of going around the studio but uh, <laughs> I'd probably affect the sound but still yeah I did think of strange things like that that's a great idea you know would you, would you go rock and roll and like when you finish a show you would break them and everything like that or you <laughs> I don't know they're pretty expensive <laughs> I'd have to be getting paid pretty good <laughs> yeah well that's in the future I think Okay, then I'll be breaking my trains. <laughs> as long as I could go buy new ones the next day. Well, that was a great question, caller. Yeah, interesting question. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks so much. Uh, you have a great well. night. We're going to continue now with... Uh, I, I, I want to say that last track. That last track is probably one of the most kick-ass, badass fucking chrome tracks ever. Great. Uh... It sounds like you were there was a message in there somewhere. Uh nothing has changed at all. Changed at all. No? Yeah. Nothing <laughs> has changed at all. That's right. Taking their axes. That was our most covered song. Go figure. <laughs> Go figure. I mean, really. It, it, it's it's strong, man. I mean, I want to know where your guys' head was at when you're writing Third from the Sun. Yeah, the tracks are tracks like Armageddon, okay, um, Shadows of a Thousand Years. Uh, I mean, it's a very dark sci-fi album. It's it's one dystopian piece of it's vinyl. It's not all bright and sunny. Not like life, brother. <laughs> 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 Uh, can you hearken back to those distant days? This was what well, we just got. We just got John and Hillary, uh, John and Hillary Stench, and uh, yeah, we were all excited about recording with them. And and uh, and, and did that have was that you think a major ingredient in the changing gears and production values and. Because you were more of a live band then at that point. I mean, w when you were playing live gigs as Chrome during Red Exposure, Half Machine, Lip Moves, how many were in your band? And who were they? Me and Damon. <laughs> That's it. Just you two on the stage. And John and Hillary. After Red Exposure. After Red Exposure, but before Red Exposure. And there was me, Damon, and Gary for a while. Gary. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and Gary was the one bottleneck just to me and Damon. I see. Why did Gary opt out? Do you think? Because John got ousted, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and he went with John out of loyalty. Because you can't treat my best friend like this. I'm leaving too. Okay. <laughs> we were like, all right. Yeah, you don't want <laughs> whatever. It. You Fair know. enough. I mean, it, the the whole band was going through a change right then. You know. There was no success or anything, you know. I mean, there's right. There was just you know, a creative drive. There wasn't anything anybody was fighting over or anything Thank like that. Thank God for that, or yeah. else it wouldn't have been uglier, right? Yeah, it was just, you know, people wondering what they're going to do with their lives, you know. So, um, this is uh, the next to last Chrome album. Uh, uh, that, no, no, this is. Two albums before the last Chrome album that you and Damon did together, basically, that have been released. But there is one more. So basically, we, we've got, we just heard Third from the Sun. We've heard the last track. We're going to hear from that. And we're moving on now to Blood on the Moon. And then, so that's Blood on the Moon and Chronicles. And that's it. Uh, yeah, for uh, a while, yeah. Till uh, Angel, Beast with the Damon Helios. Yeah. 
Well, I um, Blood on the Moon marked another shift, but it was not quite what we might have expected. You know, it, uh, it's very schizophrenic because you have tracks like this one, Blood on the Moon. Are you going to play Blood on the Moon? I'm playing it right now, okay. actually, brother, in the background because it's a nice little instrumental track oh, to talk no over. Oh, wonder I can't hear. Yeah, headphones help. Um, so, um, uh, uh, I see. you've got tracks like this, and, and God, the atmosphere on this is just impeccable. I mean, I can literally feel myself scrawling around on the moon in a space suit. <laughs> <laughs> You know, uh, hunting for that dark side. Um, but then you That's got... very lunar, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so this is the stuff that I would play. Stuff like this, stuff like Chronicles. Uh, late at night when the candle's low and, and I'm about to pass out. Whereas... Uh, Let's just skip ahead a little bit for time's sake. The track we're about to hear. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't say it's quite so easy going. So basically, you guys are all over the place on this album, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, I guess um, it could appear like that, huh? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it, it, it's not... It, it's all really strong, though. That's the thing. And I'm just wondering, uh, what were the songwriting duties at this point? Because I know that it was just basically you and Helios doing a lot of the songwriting, and, and were John and Hillary just sort of jamming with you oh no they def we all wrote together with that oh yeah. at this point so it was a four yeah, piece collaboration yeah, yeah. nice great. cool so y'all had a really good strong rapport yeah yeah we did excellent and so you were playing out as a four piece too oh yeah yeah we did some shows in Europe and shows in you know states yeah. okay and those are the uh uh those shows in Europe were released as I know there was one I know of for sure released as a French Bologna Italy yeah Bologna Italy there you go that was that was from that tour all right see there's so much chrome material been released you gotta like figure out where it all goes and yeah. time and all that uh, so uh, now we're gonna hear without talking some of the real meat from Blood on the Moon perfumed metal coming up here on Interstellar Nihilism. Are you, you still down for a little bit longer here? Oh, yeah. Right on, brother. Helios Creed in the studio. <laughs> Thanks for the listeners calling in. If you have a question for Helios Creed, call us at call us at 962-7979. We are here at Radio Valencia. This is Interstellar Nihilism. And I'm Dr. Sleepless.
was brain scan from blood on the moon and it's time to hear a little bit more about what really is going down right now with helios creed and chrome and pledge music yeah there's a there's a lot going down (laughs) um there's a new album on the horizon recorded this year, composed this year, um, and we have a sneak listen of it on pledgemusic.com forward slash chrome. Pledge Music is a website um, business model started by musicians to assist other musicians to release their albums um, and to also raise money for touring um, by linking directly with the people that love their music, their fan base, and cutting out the middleman record companies, which by and large often do little and take a lot, as Helios has experienced and has had better experiences and worse. But um, the particular era that we're working to um, release on pledgemusic.com slash chrome is from 79 and 80 Damon Edge and Helios' classic era of chrome music those particular albums surrounding that period H doesn't get very much money for um, and that's something we're working on right now but this album will be his so it's a it's exciting for a lot of reasons because it's a new business model that's kind of sprung into being it's a new way for the music industry to function it's kind of democratic and um, it's exciting because these lost chrome tracks are going to get released for the first time and people can hear some classic stuff that they've never heard they thought they heard it all but there's more so thank god for that yeah so um and thank helios and damon for that we hope that you'll hey, have a look. Don't we have, um, you know, the rhythmic song? Do we have? I have the rhythmic song. If you have the song, we need to play the rhythmic song. Yeah, I would so, love you know, to play that. So this is a song. Is a yeah, let's play it. Uh, this we'll, is a we'll song play it that. Um, no, right now. No, I'm kidding. Whenever is from this it. period, one of the Lost Chrome tracks that is a rough mix. We don't have the tracks in our possession yet. As soon as we hit 100% on pledgemusic.com, and we're at 95%, by the way, in uh, about two weeks, so we're doing good. And I personally took it from 93 to 94 last <laughs> night. So, <laughs> so um, you'll hear a rough mix. It'll be mastered and, and uh, mixed uh, differently a little bit, and there's a lot of songs that will be edited and mixed and mastered to go on this album. Um, the other thing I want to say about it is that um, we have a lot of ideas of how to keep the catalog that Helios has made with Chrome and also Solo. He's a huge catalog of albums, Solo. Um, in print, in stores, and um, you know, in the ears of you all. So when we hit 100%, it's really not the end for us. We want to keep going. We want to launch a new e-commerce website so all that can be available. And the stuff that's that's available for him that isn't owned by another record company to directly benefit him financially and not somebody else. So um, these are all nice things solution. we're working on. So one more thing I want to say is the pledges are amazing. We have a poster that was designed by... Well, I actually conceived of it, but it was uh, illustrated by Mark Steger, who's done work for Tool and all kinds of people. He's a really incredible human being, and he really got into the spirit of Helios' music and played it. And it's got galaxies and a spaceship above its head with Jimi Hendrix in it beaming down. There's all these stories from H's life. Standing on Haleakala Crater in Hawaii um, with the oceans rising, which is something we talk about in the song Prophecy. I say we because the band all wrote lines and I got to write a line also in that song. And um, so 
there's a new t-shirt design uh, with an eyeball lady, which Helio says him and Damon were doing before the residence. This is kind of a funny uh, trivia question. <laughs> Jamie got really pissed about them using. The really? Mic. Say that into the mic a little closer. Yeah, I mean, look at look at look at uh, Alien soundtracks. That record oh, yeah. came out in 76, 77. 77. You know, and the residents didn't do that till two years after that. So we did the eyeball thing first. We would put it. We put and, it up on uh, Facebook. Damon was really mad. He about was that. proprietary about that oh, shit, yeah. huh? Well, you know, you can't, you can't, sometimes I just have to put it down to the fact that great minds stink alike, <laughs> you know, because really there is no original idea because as the Bible puts it, there is nothing new under the sun. There you go. Uh, we did fine. get a lot of comments on Facebook when we posted the t-shirt logo with the eyeball lady and she's fantastic. Mark well, Drewer. somebody commented And they kept that saying, we oh, you're copying, copying the, the residents. Yes. Oh, and we had boy. to set them Little straight. Little did they know. <laughs> Just check the, the early... Which, which album? Read Only Memory? No, uh, Alien Soundtrack. Alien Soundtrack. The very first one. The very one first one you were on. And, we and who was responsible um, for the eyeball lady? Damon. I mean, <laughs> He was a regular cut-up. Yeah, I mean, collage saying. artist. Yeah. They both were. <laughs> they both were. Um, we have a photograph. Um, it's the one that we use for the pledge campaign. It's of Damon and H in 1980. And it's taken by Ruby Ray, who is an iconic uh, punk photographer who photographed the Los Angeles and L.A. scenes. And she has a book out called Punk Passage. It's an e-book. And... Um, H hadn't seen this photograph for 30 years, just like he hadn't seen heard the Lost Chrome tracks in 30 years. So this is kind of this cycle coming back around now. And she's publishing another book called um, From the Edge of the World. 35 years. No, 30. 32, actually, yeah. 31. And that book is going to have a compilation CD of all the music of the band. So we're going to have TV as eyes in that. In oh, that. sweet. Yeah. So that she's got 21 limited edition fine art prints. That's a pledge item. Um, nice. We have galactic octopi, as I said, in vinyl and CD. We have Angel of the Clouds, you which heard is a part Chrome of really album. Right. Yeah, the solo from 2011. Angel of the Clouds is the posthumous collaboration between Damon and H from And we're going to try and hear some of Angel of Clouds. Yeah, I hope later. we play Spider. That's my favorite. Spider, I think we'll, we'll do our best to manage that. Um, and these are signed or unsigned. It's cheaper unsigned, but you can have Helio sign it for you. We have um, 20 questions and email. We have Skype chats with him. We have original artwork for him to collage specially for you. All kinds of fun things in all ranges. The cheapest one is, is $10 and you get the digital release of the Lost Chrome Tracks when we're done. And every pledge goes towards um, putting out this album, the Lost Chrome Tracks, and gets you exclusive content while the campaign's going, which will be ended around the 18th of January. And you'll get photographs and MP3s and video and la la la. Good stuff. So Excellent. Um, I wanted to say that uh, I find it very fascinating where Hillary and, and uh, gosh, I can't remember. John? John Stench came from. What band did they... Pearl Harbor and the Explosions. Pearl Harbor and the Explosions. And what was that band like? Well, you have the internet right here. Oh, I... But, uh, okay, everyone, please It'd don't look up It'd be pretty hard to describe... Uh, you said it was sort of New Avish. You might, you, might, you might have it start chuckling a little bit if you were to watch it. Check it out right now, people. Pearl Harbor and the Explosions. Maybe we'll even out. play some later. We yeah. find some handy. Yeah. Um, You'll see a very young John and Hillary. Uh, Hillary is a guy, by the way, not a girl. Oh, okay. Uh -huh. I was often confused yeah. on that. Thanks for settling that like score. Like the explorer, yeah. Um, what I'd like to hear more about, because I see a synchronicity. I see a return uh, to the way you used to work, because you just said, uh, Monet just said that uh, the way you guys were working in the studio, you were all coming up with lines for the lyrics and 
uh, is Chrome a very collaborative effort now as it was back in, in this particular period, especially between all four members? How many members do you have in Chrome now, and who are you working with? Well, five, because we have a, a, a second guitar player. Five on the new album. Nice, a second guitar player, excellent. Yeah. So, well, especially live, that comes in handy with all the guitar stuff there is in Chrome, you know. You want to give me the rundown of your band, or um, who's in it, or... It's up to you. You want me to list them? Yeah. yeah. Tommy Grannis on keyboard, who's been with H and Chrome for about 16 years. Wow. Alif Kali on drums, who's been somewhere around the same time, maybe a little less, maybe 14 years. And uh, Keith Thompson is the other guitar player. He's been on board for about a year. Big Chrome fan, ran into H in Santa Cruz, happens to be a good guitar player, a great guitar player. Excellent. Rhythm. Uh, Lux Vibratus on bass, he's been with the band five years, and I'm Monet Clark, and I do a little bit of background vocals. And they sound really nice on Prophecy, i got to say. You know, one thing I wanted to say earlier was, you're following a formula that's tried and true by having vocal line follow the harmonic riff. It's the same thing they do in Arabic music, in Indian music. That's what makes it so, so potent. Expansive, and yeah, it's powerful. That was just an organic, it wasn't planned, it all just came about. The best things aren't. <laughs> wow, well, we're, we're already deep into the song that I really wanted to play. From We've been hearing in the background uh, tracks from Chronicles. One and two, which is the last work, and it's a sprawling one that Damon Edge and Helios Creed here in the studio. Damon's here in ghost form, by the way. Um, did together, and and for me, hearing Chronicles, I was so hooked on this stuff. I mean, it was. For me, it went further because the tracks are longer. I mean, you've got 20-something minute tracks oh, on there. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's ridiculous. I mean, it, beautifully ridiculous. ridiculous. We, I mean, it harkens back to the, the sense of vision and scale that bands like Yes and other bands, you know, classic bands would do, but rarely ever did again, you know. Mm -hmm. So... I just want to say thank you personally for making this album and especially this next track here being a Leo uh, I can't think it's any more appropriate
man. That is some of your finest work ever. And uh, we are coming to to the end of uh, this particular period of Chrome. But uh, we're going to move backwards in time now to a track called Something Rhythmic from the Lost Chrome album from 7980, which they are currently working on funding. The mixing, production, and mastering of. Yeah, this was recorded in 80, 1980, 79, but probably 80. What we're about to hear is actually we've got Rain Milk playing in the background, which is strangely enough, uh, Chronicles 1 and 2 were originally released as the album Raining Milk, and the tracks weren't nearly as long. Now, can you explain that? Uh, the Raining Milk was a condensed version of... Uh, Wh- which was released first? Do you know? Uh, uh, the the double Chronicles 1 and 2. And was that only released in the box set uh, initially? Because that's the only place I could find it. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, that's where I got it. That first Chrome box it had all the Chrome albums. Including Chronicles 1 and 2, but that's the first place you could get Chronicles 1 and 2. And after that, you can only get it as super limited, swirled, psychedelic vinyl that Damon was having put out on Dossier, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you didn't have any part of that, actually, No, did no. Uh-uh. I had a feeling you didn't, and I, I didn't feel good about that either. Yeah. But, you know, shit happens. People <laughs> make deals. Let's just look at what Genesis Peorge did with Robin Gristle. Jesus fucking Christ. He was like going selling all of their music that all four of them did together as his own and licensing it out left and right, making all that money for himself. Uh, Uh Uh-huh. Not good. It happens all throughout the business. Uh You know, but uh, you know, didn't sadly do him all that much good, did it? Anyhow, let's not revisit past uh past things like that let's let's hear something rhythmic from chrome off of the lost tapes and uh helios creed in the studio (laughs) 